Welcome back to Iconic Cars and it's that time again. I'm on the train and I'm going to look and hopefully buy another Iconic car. The Porsche 944. Now, this originally, when Porsche brought out the 924, uh, sparked off the usual sort of comments from the Porsche market that Porsche had built a cheap man's Porsche. But it wasn't about building a cheap man's Porsche. What it was about was getting people more involved in the brand. A 911 and a 928 couldn't really just cut it, but Porsche had to build their brand. And hence they brought out the 924, which was a great car that appealed to a lot of people's budgets. And then they realized that the car needed to have more shape. It needed to look better, and it didn't look great on a racetrack. Then we got the 944. Now this car, 1981, was one of the first 944s that came out. In the beginning it was a bit of a part bin, putting the arches on and changing a few things, but it was a good car. And the engine in the car, which was a four-cylinder engine, was a really strong, robust engine, and as was the gearbox. But the 944 really changed the shape. And this car, along with the 924, really improved the Porsche market. And by doing this, it created a much more bigger brand awareness. So this was really a game changer for Porsche and Porsche's history. This car's finished in the fabulous Guards Red which everybody knows and loves from a Porsche. When we look at the wheels on the car, they're only 15 inch, but that's what was right then. We didn't have super low profile tires to be going on a everyday usable road car. The wheels in this car are known as cookie cup wheels. The 944 sparked what was a new trend for Porsche, but this, was actually a really usable, strong, robust car. What they did to this car by putting the wider arches on, uprating the engine, giving it much more stance that the car just hadn't had before. The two options on this car was a sunroof and air conditioning, well, the two main options, uh, and a rear wash wipe. This car's got the rear wash wipe and it's also got air conditioning. The sunroof wasn't really of great importance, especially if you were over six foot tall, because the sunroof lost around about two inches out the roof lining. So if you're a bit tall and the roof only popped up, it was better to have the car without a sunroof and have air conditioning. The Porsche 94 had these really lovely curvaceous wide arches that just gave the car so much more stance and much more presence over the 924. The 15 inch alloys which were the standard alloys on the car were good enough. The car didn't have power steering so for those of you who are not used to cars without power steering it's quite heavy but it's not heavy when you're on the move. Electric windows, tinted glass and the rear glass of this car is very similar to those that I would recall as being like the Jensen Interceptor. When you look down the side from the rear and you see that these wide arches, these big haunches at the back, it gave this car real presence. It gave it an attitude. It gave it like it was driving a sports car. Whereas the 924 didn't really give off that feeling of, I've got a Porsche. The engine on the car is a very robust four-cylinder engine and it delivers very well. Matched with a five-speed gearbox, 
this car was very, very well balanced for a car of this era. Now, I really like the 944, not just because it was a game changer, but it did allow people to be able to get more involved with the brand. And that was important. That was very, very important for Porsche to have a different clientele to be involved in their brand. Time for a short break. Grab a hot dog, enjoy and subscribe. This was the typical sort of 80s interior. A bit psychedelic with the different size sort of squares and rectangles. But this gave it a very interesting, unique look and feel. You could either have pinstripe or leather interior. But this car's got what they called Pasha. The 944 had a really good driving position. It's not the easiest car to get in and out of because the steering wheel is not movable as with modern cars today. But once you're behind the wheel, your left arm can rest on the centre console and shift gear. It's actually really comfortable. It's just getting in and out of the car I find a little bit difficult with getting your knees underneath the steering wheel. But once you're in, it's a fantastic driving position. Fitted with a cassette player, which I'm sure that many people today who would be thinking of buying this car probably wouldn't even know what a cassette player is. Electric windows. When you open up the boot, there is a huge luggage space, which could be made even bigger by dropping down the middle of the seats in the rear. Very similar to that that's on a 911, which made this a very practical car. The one thing about the 944 is that it has great visibility. You have fantastic peripheral vision all around the car, better than many modern day cars that I've been in. Porsche normally always had a rev counter directly in the centre of your steering wheel. But on the 944 they put the rev counter to the right and the speedometer dead centre. The engine on these 944s were really strong. There are a huge amount of torque in them. Just put your foot down in fifth gear and they really do pull well. Cars like the 944 didn't have power steering, which is fine. Just when you're trying to park into a tight spot, you will need to have muscles behind your ears. In many ways, driving this on the motorway and as I have done for the past couple of hours you really do get to know why this car survived in Porsche's lineup for the best part of 11 years I remember these 944s back in the day driving this car now just reminds me why this car survived so long in Porsche's lineup 11 years because this was a solid robust car it looked good then they produced the 944s the 944 turbo in cabriolet and coupe i completely understand why this car lasted so long with porsche 11 years this lasted in the porsche lineup but then it was good looking, it was strong, it was robust, it was easy to drive, it was well balanced. And the 944 set out the terms and conditions for the 968 and that was a great car again. 39 years old, absolutely great value for money as a classic car to be buying to use at the weekends or use whenever this is a car you could still use every day this is a car that won't give you any nasty shocks simply the car is great looking but it's strong it's robust and it's well balanced practical, economical and really did fit in the Porsche brand mould. What a great classic to own.
Hi, this is Warren Beckwith. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram or Twitter. Have a great day. Thank you.